So now that you understand the complete calendar, we're going to get into this amazing, mind-blowing revelations that the Lord led me to see in Matthew 24, verse 36. So before we get to that, I want to make sure that you understand this very important concept, which is 2032 is the end of all things. Okay, and so is the end of the 10 years of labor and sorrow, which started in 22. Okay, so make sure this concept is clear. 22 to 32 is the complete and total end of the tribulation. Now, 31, okay, is the second coming, most likely. Remember Hebrews 11.6. So now that we understand that 32 and 31, there is a gap of time between the end of all things and 31. Now we can understand that in verse 20, 34 of Matthew 24, 34, it says, Verily, the Lord says, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass, 32, until all these things be fulfilled, 31. So the Lord is teaching us. The generation is still running, 2032, but these things have already been fulfilled, 31. So we now understand further confirmation that the second coming happens before all these things, all, all, before the generation has passed. Okay, so now that we understand this, we can go to the second chart, which is about the day and the hour. So the Lord led me to study verse 36 of Matthew 24. Now, verse 36 says, But of that day and hour know it no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Okay? So it's clear that the translation, the King James talks about knowing. And so when I did uh, receive the message, I went and study the Greek. And the idea was that because I, I had knowledge of Greek from my high school studies, I was expecting to see the verb noel or genosko, which means to know. But actually, I was surprised to find that the translation for nobody knows is not noel, but is edo. Okay, Edo is the Greek verb, and Edo stands for to see, not to know. Now, you can see from the Strong's definition that Edo stands for properly to see with physical eyes, okay, as it naturally bridges the metaphorical sense perceiving, mentally seeing, this is akin to the expressions, I see what you mean, I see what you're saying. And further, it says, seeing that becomes knowing. So you have to see it in order to know it. Then is a gateway to grasp spiritual truth, reality, from a physical plane, meaning you, you can physically see it, and then you will understand it. And so then is a physical seeing sight, which should be the constant bridge to mental, mental, mental and spiritual seeing comprehension. So what the Lord is actually saying is there is no way for you to see it. You cannot possibly see it. Therefore, you would understand it if you could see it. So this is a massive revelation because when we look at this in this new context, which is it's not about the not knowing and you're not supposed to know. It's about that you can't possibly physically see it. You can't understand it with your eyes because the things that are coming to pass are not within your comprehension. Like, for example, that from the time that the Lord was teaching this, there's no way to understand that uh, Israel will become a nation in 1948. So the next level was to understand what's the day and what's the hour. Well, here's the idea. Emeras is the day in Greek, and hour is oras. But emeras, like the opposite of esperas, which is the evening or the night, is the day portion of the day, okay? And often it is referred to, in fact, day in biblical terms is often referred to as the day as in the 12 hours of light, okay? Because we know from John 11, 9, that the Lord tells us are in there 12 hours in a day, which means that the hour represents the 12th portion of the total day, or one hour equals one twelfth of the day. You understand how major this is? Why is it major? Because in 2 Peter 3, 8, which is the verse we use 
to even prove 2031, we're told what? That one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day, which is a twice mentioned the word 1000 for 2000 and twice mentioned the word day for two days. This proves that the two days are the 2000 years and will end up in 2031. So what's more amazing is the Lord is saying, you don't know the day and you don't know the hour. What is actually the Lord saying? The Lord is saying that you don't know in which millennium this will happen. And now we can also understand under that light what the hour represents once we know that the day is a thousand years. So we just said that the hour is the 12th part of the day, not the 24th part of the day. Okay, because the Lord says it, aren't there 12 hours in one day? So all we need to do now, knowing that the day that the Lord is referring to is the thousand years, which one? The 1000 plus or the 2000 plus? We don't, we can't see it from that perspective. So that's the thousand years, which means the hour is going to be 1000 divided by 12. And guess what? 1000 divided by 12 looks like 1000 divided by 12, which is the hour is 83.33 years. Now, this is absolutely mind blowing. Why? Because we know that the total Anna is the end of the fig tree and she's 84. So the total end of things is the 84 total years that go from 1948 to 2032 that's 84 so this 83 hour represents what it represents the hour in which the lord will return for his second coming but guess what it's not 84 it's 83.3 so guess how amazing this is look at the calculations 1000 divided by 12 is 83.33 or 84 years but it's actually 83.3 which means 1948 to 32 will be the fig tree generation. Why? Because Anna is 84. And therefore, the day, one day will be the 48, the, the millennium of the 1900s. The second millennium will be the 2000s. We don't know, or they didn't, couldn't see which one of those was. Now, we know the hour is 84 years, which, we, which is the hour between 48 and 32. That's 84 years. But the hour is actually 83.3 years for his second coming, which means it's in 31, because 83.333 years from 1948 will take us to 2031. And that's exactly the end of the two days, according to 2 Peter 3, 8, because it's 23 plus 8 equals 31. So now this unlocks a lot more wisdom. Why? Because 1948 begins on May 14. And this is something that we know, of course, we have to go by faith. But if we are correct in understanding this, we can add simply add 83.3 years, which will take us to sometimes around August and August of 31 and sometimes in the beginning of September of 31. And this will be the second coming. Now, this put in perspective is absolutely incredible. Because we're going to now know that we have a 32, May 14, let's say around, and then a 31, sometimes in the August, September time, which then will take us back the seven years of the wedding. We can look at it down here. Will take us back the seven years of the wedding to sometimes around the same time. So maybe the summer, fall of 2024. And... If that's the case, if that's the case, this is a big if, but if that's the case, then the possible one year scenario for Mary, okay, the so-called bride representation will be about a year before. So we could begin to see the possibility that we begin to see either the rapture or something that leads us to see even further confirmation that could start sometimes in the fall of 2023 as the one year anticipation for what is likely to be the wedding feast in the late summer and or fall of 2024. Now this is absolutely incredible because once we have the 83.3 years and the 84 
years and understand the difference between 32 and 31, we're now able to focus a little bit more into what we call the window. Now we're going to bring in in the next video, Aster. And Aster, if you thought that this was incredible, the Aster calendar is absolutely incredible and locks in so many of these concepts. So we want to pay attention and make sure that we understood the whole sequence here. So let me do a recap before we move on to the Esther scenario. What we're seeing here is we have now the understanding that the day and the hour lead us to 83.3 years for the hour. That is to be calculated from 1948. So from 1948, we now have two dates. We just said it and I'll repeat it for reasons of clarity. 32 being May 14 of 32, the 84 years, and sometimes around August to September 31 being the 83.3 years, and that will be likely the second coming. So from there, as we said earlier, we go back a seven year time, which will take us to the feasts time, right around the same time, end of August and September 24, and the possible one year before that, which will be you know, we put here the May uh, scenario, but in all truth, it will probably be around the same time. So the uh, fall of 2023 as a possible scenario, extending sometimes, and that will be the year time, extending sometimes in the possibly early 2024 as the most likely scenario for the rapture. That means that then we have the tribulation starting right around the June possibly the June time, and that's because we scale back what? The uh, 1260 plus 1260 uh, days for the tribulation, which gives us 2520 days, which is really the 2025. So here's the final chart. We know now the day and the hour are leading us to the second coming. That's in 31. 32 is the end of the tribulation, which starts in 25. 26 will be the height uh, of the Antichrist. 27 is going to be the year 6000, what we call the flood. From 31, we go back seven years. So the feast will start in 24. And the possible scenario is that the bride is taken uh, or warned, one of the two, sometimes in the year 23, possibly, possibly starting in the fall and maybe leading into the first few months of 24. This gives us the full complete scenario. It is an amazing uh, revelation. It's out of the generosity of the Lord that's leading us to see these things so that we can be prepared, but most importantly, that we can continue to share the gospel as the time approaches and he's letting us know. The next um, episode here will be the Esther calendar, which if you thought this was uh, really amazing. I hope it is and inspiring and uplifting and a blessing. The, the Aster calendar will be in absolutely incredible. So I'm going to ask you to um, look out for the next episode and I'll try to post it as soon as possible. God bless you in Jesus name.